For this micro lesson, we will be covering the topic of healthy watersheds. The learning objectives for this micro lesson include defining what is a watershed, discussing characteristics of a healthy watershed, and exploring ways that the soil conservation districts can support healthy watersheds. Let's start by defining what is a watershed. By definition, a watershed is an area of land that drains to a common point. You can think of it much like a bathtub. Any drop of water that falls in that tub will eventually drain to one common point. On the right hand side of your screen, you will see a depiction of a watershed with its labeled parts, including the ridge line, which separates watersheds from each other, as well as estuaries and the floodplain where water drains to the common point, in this case, the estuary. We can define watersheds by their hydrologic unit code, which simply represents the size of the watershed. For example, a regional watershed is going to be a two digit HUC, whereas a localized watershed or sub watershed is going to be a 10 or 12 digit HUC. What we need to remember here is that the larger the number, larger the HUC number, the smaller the area. Here is a depiction of the HUC2 watersheds in North Dakota. Because of the size of these watersheds, they overlap into much of the rest of the country. In the southwest portion of the state is going to be the Missouri-Mississippi watershed that drains to the Gulf of Mexico. On the northeast side of the state is going to be the Red River watershed, which is going to drain into Hudson Bay. The line that separates these two watersheds is known as the Continental Divide. Here is a depiction of our Huck 4 watersheds in North Dakota. Comprising these are the Red River Basin in the east, the James River Basin in the east central portion of the state, the upper and lower Missouri River Basins in the southwest portion of the state, and the Soros Basin in the north central portion of the state. Here are the Huck 6 watersheds, the Huck 8 watersheds, the Huck 10 watersheds, and finally the Huck 12 watersheds, which are significantly smaller than the Huck 2s we started with. Now let's dive into the characteristics of a healthy watershed, starting with good, as good being a relative term to your area and state, water quality, and water quantity. Water quality is impacted by pollutants, both in point source and non-point source forms. Point sources are direct dischargers, such as factories that receive permits in order to discharge wastewater into rivers, lakes, and other natural water body systems. Non-point sources are undefinable sources, which make their way into water bodies through means of runoff, erosion, or seepage. The image on the left-hand side of your screen offers just a few examples of point and non-point sources of pollution. Water quantity is heavily impacted by topography and climate. For example, in North Dakota, we have more intermittent streams in the western portion of our state due to the more variable topography and likelihood of flash events. In the eastern portion of the state, we have more intermittent tributaries and more consistent river systems as the topography is less variable, more flat, and rivers experience more constant flow throughout their seasons. In order to determine if a watershed has good water quality and water quantity, we need to monitor. The North Dakota Department of Environmental Quality has an ambient monitoring network for rivers and streams and lakes. The United States Geological Survey has gauging stations positioned on different water bodies across the state for measuring flow and stage heights. These stations can also be equipped with meters in order to do real time water quality data collection. The second characteristic of a healthy watershed would be habitats, 
with diverse aquatic organisms and wildlife. Biological indicators such as fish and benthic macroinvertebrates can be used to quantify the health of a water body. Certain species of fish and benthic macroinvertebrates are unable to survive in heavily polluted waters. These species are considered to be pollution intolerant. When we sample for fish and benthic macroinvertebrates, if those species, the pollutant intolerant species, are not present, we know that the water quality is poor. The third characteristic of healthy watersheds is healthy soils. Healthy soils support plant growth and species diversity, as well as acting as natural filter systems for groundwater and surface water runoff. The five principles of soil health outline ways to improve degraded and unproductive soils and support healthy watershed through the implementation of soil armor and residue, limited disturbance, plant diversity, living roots, and livestock integration. The fourth and final characteristic of a healthy watershed that we will talk about today is implementation of best management practices. Through implementation of best management practices, Producers are stewards of the land and help to preserve natural resources for generations to come. This slide depicts just a few examples of best management practices that have been applied across North Dakota. Examples such as cover crops or intercropping, cross fencing for grazing rotation systems, watering fixtures to pull cattle out of river and stream systems, and pasture hayland plantings to help establish native species onto the landscape. Soil conservation districts help by facilitating cost share programs, conducting tree and grass plantings, and providing technical support and assistance to producers for BMP implementation. To learn more about healthy watersheds, please utilize the resources listed on this slide. The North Dakota Department of Environmental Quality houses the Non-Point Source Pollution Management Program, which administers Clean Water Act Section 319 funds to support assessment efforts, as well as BMP implementation. The Natural Resources Conservation Service is involved in best management practice implementation through their EQIP, CSP, and RCPP programs. The Dakota Legacy Initiative is a great resource that lists out a variety of different cost share programs available to producers across the state of North Dakota. Let's review. A watershed is defined as an area of land that drains to a common point. The example that was given was a bathtub. The larger the hydrologic unit code of a watershed, the smaller the watershed area. And finally, we discussed four characteristics of healthy watershed, which include good water quality and quantity, which we monitor for, habitats with diverse aquatic organisms and wildlife, this includes fish and benthic macroinvertebrates, as well as waterfowl species and other mammals that would reside in water bodies, healthy soils, inclusive of the five principles of soil health, and finally, implementation of best management practices, which are supported through various state and federal agencies in the state of North Dakota. Feel free to contact a member of the soil and water conservation team should you have questions following this micro lesson. Now with your board, please take a moment to discuss the following. How do soil conservation districts improve water quality in North Dakota? What might be some ways you can incorporate watershed protection into your annual plan of work? What best management practices would have the biggest impact in your local area? Please utilize the handout worksheet to help organize your thoughts. Finally, all photos and graphics from this presentation were procured from open source platforms or taken by North Dakota Department of Environmental Quality employees or 319 project coordinators.